car then, living with an E30 BMW. It's fair to say, it's a really joyous experience actually, and if you've been following the channel for a while, you know I've had my 1989 320i Touring for coming up a year now, I actually bought it end of September 2019, so fast approaching a year, and it's been a really great experience. Now, for me the E30 is an incredibly unique car, I mean it's, a, it's the perfect example of cars built in a way that they just don't do anymore, I mean this is really quite special in today's sort of realm of modern cars, and what I mean by that is it's just the old sort of engineering techniques, the old mindset, the old design criteria of these cars. Now, I'm not going to go too much into driving details on this and for that you can check out my review. But we're looking at about 1250 kilos, we've got 130 horsepower when it's stock and around 120 foot pounds of torque as well. But for me it's all about that engine sound as it just really builds up revs really nicely out. The power of course is so linear being naturally aspirated, everything happens at the top end. There's not too much torque down low end, but to be honest you don't need it, it's such a light car, it shifts at low end anyway. Once you start building above four or 5,000 RPM it really starts to get up and go, which is absolutely fantastic. And of course we've got that five speed manual and rear wheel drive. One thing I do wish I had in this actually was the LSD, uh, we've just got an open differential, I would like to change that out at some point actually just to get that sort of more driver focused feeling I suppose. But yeah I mean it's, it's a very unique thing these days, you really don't see many of these E30s about. Um, I've been to a couple of sort of car shows and things, which is quite cool as well. Obviously, it gets a bit of attention there. People like to see them out and about, that's one thing. But of course another thing is just how easy these things are to work on. I mean, parts are readily available, they're cheap, and there's a, there's a level of electronics in this car that allow it to be usable and reliable as a daily driver, yet easy to work on yourself. You don't need complicated tools, you don't need to take it to a specialist dealer or anything like that. This is all stuff that you could do at home with really quite simple engineering knowledge, to be honest. And as I've mentioned previously, I've done the timing belt change myself on this car, so, and yeah, it wasn't too bad a job. And of course, it's just absolutely brilliant to drive. It's quite interesting actually because it's once again that sign of just how things were done differently back in the day. This is not a performance oriented car, yet it's still a driver's car, and by today's standards, that just seems ridiculous. That doesn't seem like it could be, you know, the way a car should be made. But we've got pretty comfortable suspension and nice, comfortable seats. A hydraulic steering rack of course, which is just fantastic, so much feel through that. But it's a very slow rack, a lot of turns lock to lock, and we're used to these days cars just with faster and faster steering racks, and it's quite strange actually to get into something with such a slow rack. But again, it just, it just shows that to, to have fun in the car, things don't need to happen quickly. This car forces you to take time. The gear change throw is, is so long compared to modern cars. As I say, it's so many turns lock to lock on the steering, everything forces you to take your time more. And for me, that power is really all you need for a car of this weight and size. Okay, maybe the 325i would be better in some situations if you really want to push on. But as a proper road car, this is fast enough.
that thing up. Now, there are one or two downsides of owning a 30-year-old car. As I've mentioned in some of my other videos, um, rust on these E30s is a big issue, and it's pretty difficult to find one that doesn't have any rust. So there are those little things that you've really got to keep an eye out for. It requires a bit of attention just to keep it looking good and keep it fresh. I keep mine dry stored, and that'll certainly help, and that'll definitely help preserve the life of it. But it's just one of those things. I mean, it's a 30-year-old car. Although this thing is very easily used as a daily driver, I think most people are going to want it as their sort of weekend car or just a car they can have fun in. So it's probably not going to be their main car. And as such, storing it in a garage, you know, it's probably pretty easy to do. For me, being younger as well, obviously insurance wasn't the cheapest with it being a six-cylinder rear-wheel drive car. Insurance companies really don't like that sort of thing in the UK. Um, but I know a lot of sort of older people and stuff that have these on classic policies for just as little as 100 or 200 pounds a year. So I think from that perspective, it can be done a lot more cheaply. The other thing is fuel. I mean, I think as a, a car that you're going to enjoy, uh, fuel usage really doesn't matter. Obviously here in the UK, fuel can be quite expensive. But overall, I'll probably get 20 to 25 mpg and that's driving it relatively hard um, sort of for most of the time. So I think that's pretty acceptable for a 30-year-old early fuel injection car anyway. Ultimately though, it's all about that driving experience. Such an enjoyable thing. We've got pedals perfectly set up for heel and toe. The gearbox feels great, steering's great. The naturally aspirated engine in itself is quite a rare thing these days, obviously. But it just feels fantastic. The suspension is soft yet not wallowy. You take it onto a road like this and there's really very little body roll which is quite surprising actually for how soft and comfortable it actually feels. So I suppose then, what's it like to have an E30? Well, it's an incredibly enjoyable experience. And honestly, if you're on the market for one, I would not hesitate to buy one.